guys, without further ado, Callie Means. Working for the food and pharma industries early in my career, my job was to funnel money to institutions that Americans trust. We funneled money to civil rights groups. In return, the NAACP said it was imperative to keep Coca-Cola on food stamps. They actually said it was racist to take ultra-processed food and soda off of food stamps, and today, soda is the number one item purchased with that program. We funneled money to medical organizations. The American Diabetes Association of all groups took millions of dollars from Coca-Cola, and they said small cans of the drink was a good choice for diabetics. The American Academy of Pediatrics, 80% of their funding comes from the pharmaceutical industry. We funneled money to researchers. I was shocked as a junior employee to be communing with top professors at Harvard and Tufts Nutrition School. I found that 11 times more funding comes from the food industry for nutrition research than the NIH. I found out that more than 50% of the Harvard Med School budget touches pharma in some way. We funneled money to the media. Pharma funds over 50% of all TV news funding. And I realized that wasn't to influence consumers, that was to influence the, the news itself. That's why during COVID, which was essentially a foodborne illness, this was a, really a condition that did not kill metabolically healthy people. There was no curiosity, no reporting on that. Of course, it was just a pharmaceutical solution that was talked about. We funded politicians. The healthcare industry funds politicians with direct donations, 5x more than the oil industry, 3x more than any other industry. And we funded the regulatory agencies. The FDA itself, 75% of their funding comes not from taxpayers, but pharmaceutical companies. And I can tell you from being in DC, bureaucracies are built to grow. Our system is rigged. And the disastrous ramifications are plain to see. Nine of the 10 killers of Americans are tied to preventable chronic conditions tied to food. 90% of healthcare costs are tied to these preventable conditions tied to food. The statistics are unfathomable. 50% of young adults are overweight or obese. 33% of young adults have prediabetes. 25% of young adults have fatty liver disease. This is a moral stain on our country. The childhood obesity rate in Japan is 4%. We're committing genocide against our children. Why is the healthcare system letting this happen? There's one simple reason. Every single institution that impacts your health is incentivized for you to be sick and incentivized against you being healthy. That includes medical schools, insurance companies, pharmaceutical companies, and hospitals. An unemotional statement of economic fact is that there has been no more profitable invention in the history of American than a sick child, than a child with chronic disease. They suffer and rack up more comorbidities and more interventions, but they don't die. They just suffer. Today, statins, metformin, antidepressants, Adderall, they're prescribed like candy in high schools. And the American Academy of Pediatrics recently put out a press release saying it's an urgent national priority to prescribe Ozempic to 50% of 12-year-olds. This is a lifetime drug. This is a story of optimism. The American people want to be healthy. They want their kids to be healthy. They want to thrive. The incentives are stacked against us. They've been stacked against us quickly, and they can change quickly with leadership. We need a president who questions the science, that doesn't just trust the science. We need a president who realizes that this devil's bargain between the food industry making us sick and the health care industry profiting is the biggest issue we face. We need a president who has the moral clarity to appoint Dr. J to lead our medical policies, to appoint Kelly Peterson to oversee our agriculture policies. We need a president who will stand up to pharma lobbyists, who will stand up to corrupt bureaucrats at the NIH and the FDA. We need a president who will say less Ozempic, more exercise, less SSRIs, more sunlight and healthy food. 
We need a president who has the moral clarity to declare a state of emergency for the childhood chronic disease epidemic that is savaging our human capital. And we need a president who realizes we've talked about childhood disease so much. This is the most important issue in our country. And we need a president who understands that we cannot poison our kids at scale. And we need a president that has a plan to fix it. We need a Kennedy in the White House. Thank you.